Welcome everyone, and uh, today my topic is building dimensions in Pentaho data integration, and especially we will have a look at building slowly changing dimensions. Now, what we're talking about slowly changing dimensions is what we mean is we want to track the history of changes in our data. So in this simple example, what we have is I've prepared a spreadsheet. Um, so we have three clients. Uh, the name and client ID and we have the region. So we want to be able to do is to track the changes in the region. So in this example Julia, our client ID number one, is going to move from Manly to Bonner Beach and we need to make sure that our orders are getting shipped to the appropriate location after she's moved. So in here I have a very simple table in Excel spreadsheet where I've got my client ID, and client ID is what uniquely identifies the client, right? So if Julia changed her name or region, she's still client ID number one. That's that person. On the next spreadsheet, I have orders, and it's very simple. Again, we have the client ID, so we see that the number one comes up twice, which means it's the same person, so it's Julia. She's placed two orders. One was on the 1st of November and one was on the 8th of November. And it's obviously some made up data because we're not on the 8th of November yet. And um, then we're just tracking the order item ID. So first thing I want to do is have a look how to load this data into Pentaho data integration, so into our tables. So what I've created is a little transformation called Dim clients. What we're doing here is we're getting the client information from the spreadsheet. Uh, so this is the path to my spreadsheet. Look at the sheets. I'm using sheet one. And I have a look at the fields. I've got the client ID, name, and region. So I can preview here. And I've got Julia, Jack, and Andrew. And the client ID is one, two, and three. Probably should have, yeah, I'll leave it there. Could have made it a uh, integer. So next, what I'm doing is I'm joining the load date with the client information because I want, since it's a spreadsheet, I want to know when I have loaded this data. So we're assuming it's act accurate as of today. In the load date, what I'm using is it's called a get system data. So it's just a, just a system date timestamp. And if I preview, it just gives me the current date and time. If you're ever confused, um, there is a system date fixed and variable. I've added a little comment here in the top. So the fixed one is system date determined at the start of the transformation. And the variable would be determined every time we look, so every time we execute this step. So if I had this step in the beginning of the transformation, and at the end of the transformation, it would determine the time in the beginning of the transformation and at the end of the transformation. In this case, it probably doesn't really matter which one we use, but we just use the fixed. So partition product will simply join all the data together. So if I preview here, it just adds to every record, it adds the load date, which is Nine. Um, the next step, what we're doing is we're defining the metadata, saying the client ID is an integer and the load date is a date, and name and regions are string. So then I'm using a step called dimension lookup update. And I'm saying update the dimension, tick that, it's very important. Um, I'm selecting my connection and I'm selecting my target table. So this table doesn't exist, I'm creating a new table. Um, important is my keys. So when we looked at this table first time, I said client ID is what identifies the client. So this is my key, whether the client moves, I change the name, the ID is still the same. So I'm going to use that as an identifier. And that's the same in the table as in, in the string. Um, these are all the fields 
get reinserting into the table. And so what I'm going to do is for name and region, I'm using type of dimension update insert. We'll see what it means. But basically this is the option that allows us to track historical changes of names or regions. Um, also we need to define the technical key here. So usually we call it surrogate key, that's why it's got an underscore SK. And this is the field that we have a different value for every row in this table. So it's not necessarily the same as client ID. We'll see why. Uh, version field is version. And we have a date from and date to. These are usually the defaults, so we'll leave them there. Um, so now I have done all the settings on this step. All I need to do is create my target table. So I hit SPL. And it creates the table dim clients demo. That's the name of the table specified in this step. It's, it has identified that client is key is my primary key, so it's this one. And we also are creating two indexes, one on client ID and one on client SK. So the reason we need those indexes is, well, client SK is the primary key, and client ID is this field that we're looking up on, so having an index on this field will just make the lookup a little bit faster. So execute here. And then my table is created. Hit OK. And let's add. Let's save that. If I look at my metrics at the bottom, I can also see that there's been three rows processed. One row came from load date, which is just today's date. Join them. And we've written Dim Clients Demo is my table output set. We've written three rows. So if I now go and have a look at this table, let's go browse, find my dim clients demo. So this is exactly what we have in the spreadsheet, plus a few extra fields. Let's see. So we've got a version field, which does have has a version one because we've no we have not changed the data, we just load it for the first time. Um, we have a date from, which starts sometime really far at the back, so a hundred years ago or so. And date two is something really far in the future. So then there's our client IDs, the name and the region, and the load date, which was the date when we loaded the, this data. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my spreadsheet, and let's imagine that Julia moves to Bondo Beach. All right, so I'm just change, I've just changed that address, and I save this spreadsheet. And I run this transformation again, so no changes in the transformation. Advance. And we will see here that there is one row in the output, and we have updated two rows in my target table. Let's have a look at them now. So what has happened is, if we sort by client ID, it becomes really clear that the same person has now moved from mainly to Bondo Beach. And we will see that the date from, for mainly, stayed the same. That's the very first entry. Date two changed to when we run this transformation. And again, for Bondo Beach, date from has changed to be the same as previous date two. And for Bondo Beach, date two is something very far in the future. So basically now what we know is that Julia on this date moved from mainly to Bondo Beach. Cool. Now let's see how we can utilize this information when we load our fact table. So we have our little orders table, so the information. And this table is saying oh, that Julia has actually placed two orders. One on the 1st of November and one on the 8th of November. And we also know that today, on the 7th of November, Julia moved from Manly to Bondo Beach. So it's really important that this order goes to Manly and this one goes to Bondo Beach. Yeah? So in our fact orders table, what we're going to do is, again, spreadsheet um, Excel input same fields, um, preview, 
So we get plant ID, order date, amount, and order item ID. And now we need to use this order date to retrieve the correct address for the region. So notice it's the same step. It's again dimension lookup update, but we have unticked this option, update the dimension. So we will not be updating this dimension. Same connection, same target table. Again, we're using client ID because we said this is what identifies the client, the person. And we retrieve the client as K. Now, in case that got confusing, let's just look at the table again. So, client ID, we've got two for Joel, that's the one here. But she's got those two entries have different client SKs. So if we get client SK1, we'll be looking at mainly. If we get client SK4, we'll be looking at Bromba Beach. So that's why in here, using the client ID, we're going to get the client SK. And to be able to get the correct client SK, we need to use the order date. And it's, it's called a stream date field here. So basically, this order date will co be compared to the date from and date to in that table. So look at the table again quickly. So the order date will need to be between date from and date to, and will fetch the respective vector. So that is the magic trick. Then what we're doing is, again, select values, find some metadata, and put it all into the correct orders table. And just like a preview here. And so we'll see that for the same client ID, we get two different client SKs. So that will make sure that we get the correct region for Julian. Even though she moved from one place to another, that will help us make sure that the order goes into the correct, uh, correct location. So we go to the computers. That's it. The same client ID, two different client SKs. So when we, from here, the next step would be probably to build some sort of report or build a cube and create a schema so that we can um, use Analyzer or any other MDX type tool to create reports. So that's when we would be creating, um, connecting this table with the dim client using the client SK rather than the client ID to make sure that we get the correct information for the client at that point of time. So I've got here a bit of a comment about the stream date field, um, which is this one. So in this case, we had we actually had a stream date field. So we said, okay, we want to get the record where the date from and date to include the order date. But if we didn't define the stream date field, it would just take the current date. So whenever you run this transformation. And I think that's it for me. Thank you.